Okay, let's go ahead and subtract negative 3 fourths from 1 half. That is the problem we're going to be dealing with in this uh, little video. And I'm saying here that 75% will get this wrong. Well, I don't know if it's exactly 75%, but there's going to be a lot of people out there, if they were given this problem, are going to be, one, confused about what to do, two, get the wrong answer, and three, if they did get the right answer, they might feel kind of lucky about, you know, uh, hey, I did get the right answer. Wow, that's great. You know, remember, when you get a problem correct, okay, in mathematics, let's say you're given a problem and you uh, actually got the right answer, but you weren't sure that if you were doing it correctly, okay, and you're like, mm, I think I'm doing it right. Uh, and then you're like, oh, wow, I actually got it right. You, know, you have to ask yourself, is that a really a you know confirmation that you understand the process? Well, no, there is some luck involved. And what we want to do and this particular problem is just have you be absolutely certain on handle how to handle a basic uh, subtraction problem. And it can be a little bit confusing. So if you're not quite sure, well, then you're probably in this 75%. But it certainly doesn't mean that you cannot learn this. And we're going to go ahead and get you to master this uh, in this little short video. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And let me just tell you very briefly about my math help program. You can find the link to it in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything in between. I also have a ton of test prep courses. So if you're taking any exam with math on it, so examples would be like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, a teacher certification exam, um, ASVAB. So you can kind of get the idea. A lot of people take a lot of exams for all sorts of reasons. And, you know, math shows up on all these exams typically. So I can help you prepare. I also uh, do a lot with homeschooling. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning program. Now, if you are a student, one thing that you need to be uh, uh, really aware of is how important your notes are. Okay, I've been teaching math for decades. If your notes aren't like super awesome, then you need to work on your notes. Okay, don't uh, minimize uh, how important note-taking is, all right? I'm just telling you right now, there's a correlation between great notes and you doing uh, outstanding in mathematics. So take great notes. You'll thank me later. But in the meantime, if you need a pair of math notes, you can check out my math notes. I'm going to leave the links to, uh, to those in the description of this video. All right, so let's get into this problem now. If you want to, um, you know, pause the video and do this real quick. You don't want to use your calculator or nothing like that. Or if you want to just think about it for a second, I'm going to get into it. So let's get started. And here is our problem. Okay, so subtract negative three-fourths from one-half. So what does that mean? Well, we can kind of, um, we know what this subtraction means, right? Almost everyone knows, hey, we're going to be using this mathematical operator. So I'm like, okay, I got that down, but how? Okay, so we can use that operator. Here it is. There's a subtraction sign. Here's a subtraction sign, and here's a subtraction sign. So what do we do? Okay, what does this mean? Subtract negative three-fourths from one-half. Does it mean this? Does it mean this, or does it mean this? Kind of reminds me of that uh, uh, old game show. I think it was the uh, Price is Right or whatnot, or what's behind door number three? <laughs> you have to kind of pick which one to do, right? Because, you know, we're not sure. This is can be a little bit confusing. So which one is it, All right? Is it a... B or C. So I'm going to give you a second to think about this because if you don't get this right, then anything you do beyond this point, it, it could be wrong, right? So the first part of this problem that confuses students is what does this mean? We want to subtract negative three, three fourths from one half. Well, uh, the correct answer is C. So if you selected that, I must give you your prize for this game show, which is a happy face and A plus. Very, very good. All right, but so that's the first part of doing this correct. But let's talk about this, though. So we want to subtract away. We want to take away negative three-fourths from one-half. Let's use some easier numbers to understand this. So let's subtract. Let's do the same problem, okay? Let's subtract uh, two from seven. What does that mean, okay? Well, it's like the word take away. We want to subtract two away from seven. So if we have seven, we want to take away two from seven. Okay, so we're subtracting two from seven. So this word, the way this setup is, because when we're dealing with subtraction, there's another word called difference. We can find the difference between two and seven. So, you know, subtraction can be a little bit confusing. So if you're a little bit confused, 
uh, that's pretty normal, okay? So the whole point of this video is to clear up any confusion on how to set up the problem. So here, we wanna subtract this value. It happens to be a negative value, negative three-fourths from one-half. So you can see here, I have one-half. So this one right here, let's just, so before I talk about the correct answer, let's talk about B. So if you um, selected B, you were kinda of close, right? Uh, and don't feel bad if you selected A because a lot of people made that error, right? So here, uh, you're saying, well, we have one half, we want to, we want to take away uh, three-fourths, a negative three-fourths, and a lot of students of this particular problem, they'll see this has a negative sign. They think, oh, this is negative sign, this is negative sign, so I don't have to write it twice, so this is okay. That's a common misunderstanding as well. That is not uh, correct. So what we have to do, let me get rid of all of this now, I'll erase all of this just so we can focus in on the correct um, uh, format here is we're gonna, we, we wanna take away this negative three-fourths, okay, from one-half, right? So we have the subtraction operator. Here is the value, this negative three-fourths. We're gonna subtract it away from one-half, okay? So you have to be very careful when you set this up and use parentheses, especially when you're dealing with a negative value, all right? So this is the um, big part. I would say this is like 50% of getting this problem correct. All right, now, let's suppose you, you selected one of these other options, A or B. No problem, okay, so my next question to you is, can you do this, all right? Because if you can do this, then you're going to get the problem right. So, interesting, all right? How many of you can actually uh, figure out what this is, okay? In other words, solve this problem. All right, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the solution now. If you don't wanna see it, and you wanna think about it for a second, go ahead and pause the video, but let's continue and get the final answer. All right, so here is uh, negative three-fourths, okay? We're gonna subtract negative three-fourths from one-half, so this is the setup, we already talked about it. All right, now the first thing we need to discuss is that we have this subtraction sign, which is a negative sign, which is also this subtraction sign, okay? It's a mathematical operator like plus, addition, multiplication, division. So we use different words for this, right? It's like subtraction, uh, the difference, uh, negative. But you can also think of this as opposite, okay? So here we have, we're subtracting, but it's also a negative sign, right? So you can, there's different ways we can interpret this, but, you, but the bottom line is the outcome's gonna be the same. So a negative sign, you could also think of it as the opposite sometimes, when it, especially when you have like a negative and a negative or subtraction outside of a negative. Just know when you have two like negative signs like this, the opposite of a negative, what's the opposite of a negative? It's positive or negative times negative is positive. So the first thing you need to recognize is that this right here, these signs, the negative outside of a negative like this is going to become positive. So this uh, whole problem is going to turn into this problem, one half plus three fourths. Okay, so that is the first step. Now I'm breaking this up in its you know little parts because it, you know if there's any one thing that confuses you, you know we want to clear up that one con uh, piece of confusion because let's suppose you set this up correctly. All right, that's very very good. Okay, but let's suppose you were confused about this part. Okay, and you did the problem wrong. But if we can just undo this confusion. Um, and get you kind of squared away with this, then you'll be able to do all these problems right. All right, now we got a basic fraction problems. By the way, if you're having any difficulty with fractions uh, on my uh, channel, I have a ton of videos on fractions. Matter of fact, I'm kind of proud of my fraction videos. I probably have mm, maybe 3 million views total on some of my videos. I know that one of my particular videos, uh, I think the title is um, How to Do Fractions in Seven Minutes, something like that. Learn Fractions in Seven Minutes. I think it has like over, it has over two million views, at least at the time of this video. So, you know, there's a lot of people that struggle with fractions and don't feel bad about any of this stuff. Okay, if you're, you know, um, you know, not familiar with this or you don't remember, well, listen, you can learn this. Okay, so now the question is one half plus three fourths. What do we do? Well, we need to, there's two ways you can do this, okay? I wanna suggest that you check out my fraction videos in my um, pre-algebra playlist, uh, just to kind of review this, but we're gonna use the LCD. Remember when you're adding fractions, uh, we need to find the LCD. Uh, so we need to determine, are uh, the fractions here, do they have the uh, same denominator? No, they do not. What is the lowest common denominator? It is four, the lowest common denominator, the LCD is four. Now, 
how you find the LCD, that's a whole nother topic in and of itself. So things that you need to review about fractions, if you're, you know, struggling a bit, you're going to need to know how to find the LCD. Okay, it's easy with these basic problems, but it can get, when the denominator is more challenging, you need to go through a particular procedure on how to find the LCD. The second thing you'll, you'll need to know is how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide fractions. Okay, and then the last thing, <clears throat> excuse me, is you want to check out my bow tie shortcut method for adding and subtracting fractions. Okay, so all of this right here you can find in my pre-algebra playlist. But again, too, if you really, really want to learn this stuff and some algebra, you might want to check out like my pre-algebra uh, course. All right, so here the LCD is for, what does that mean? Well, we want to uh, write these denominators, okay? Each fraction we want to write uh, with a denominator of four. So I'm like, okay, no problem. This one already has four, so that's no big deal. So we're going to have to fix this guy up right here. Right, this is one half. How do I get this to be a four down here? Well, we need to multiply that denominator by four uh, by two, right? Because two times two will turn that into a four. That's what I need to do. However, because I multiplied the denominator by two, I need to multiply the numerator by two as well. So two times one is two. So two fourths is obviously equivalent to the fraction one half. All right, so now finally, finally, we can uh, get our answer. So both of the denominators are the same now. Uh, and let's think about what that word means, lowest common denominator. They are common denominators. In other words, hey, they have something in common. Uh, what do they have in common? Well, they're exactly the same. Okay, they're not different. They are common denominators, and they happen to be the lowest of common denominators that they could be. Okay, so well, we have the LCD. So same denominator, the lowest common denominator. So what we're gonna do is write that number, okay, the LCD, uh, the denominator there, and then we're gonna add the numerator. So that's two plus three, that is five, and that is five fourths. All right, so if you got this problem right with certainty, not like you kinda like, mm, we're lucky to get it right, but if you got this right, absolutely 100%, like I knew exactly what I was doing, well then I must give you my nice happy face an A plus 100% with a good old 1986 Mohawk, okay, with extra Aquanet hairspray, very, very good, very, very impressive. So here's the thing, math is about learning uh, by making mistakes, okay? You can't learn anything without making errors. Or the, <laughs> anything in life that you try to learn, you know, there's that old saying, every master was once a disaster. Well, that's the same thing, okay? So when you start doing problems, you get things wrong, don't be discouraged. What you want to do is show your work and methodically start going through what you know and don't know, right? And that's where, you know, having a, you know, a teacher that you can learn from and explain all this stuff to you is invaluable. So that's my goal with my videos, is try to teach math in a clear and understandable way, and hopefully you learned something from this video. Now, if that is the case, please do me a favor and smash that like button, and do me one other favor, if you like my teaching style, if you're thinking, yeah, maybe this guy might be worth to follow, you know, maybe you want to subscribe to my channel. Uh, I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus, uh, videos, math videos, basic to advanced mathematics, and I'm posting content all the time, but my best math help will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.